Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our webcast today with Gigaspaces and SanDisk. Today on the line, we have Saeed Raja from SanDisk and Uri Cohen from Gigaspaces. At this time, I'll pass it over to Uri to start the show. Thanks, Eliza. Hi, everyone. My name is Uri Cohen. I head the product team um, at Gigaspaces. Um, and today, we're going to talk about um, how we combine SSD and RAM to basically create um, a very cost-effective solution to process data at, at a very high speed and very, very low, uh, very high throughputs. Said, uh, please present yourself. Good morning, everyone. My name is Said Raja. I am director of product management, focused at enterprise software at SanDisk, based in Milpitas, California, USA. Thanks, Saeed. Uh, really happy to have you on board here, and we're honored uh, to we're honored for you to take part in in this in the session. Um, so I want to start by uh, just kind of reviewing the need from from a market perspective. So we're seeing that uh, in almost every vertical, um, the the need to process uh, large amounts of data um, very very quickly is 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 very very dominant. If you look at things like uh, social networking, where you want to track trends and sentiment, uh, things like user engage engagement and tracking, uh, we have billions of users using the web. Users using the web every day want to know what they're doing uh, and be able to act on it uh, in, a, in, in, in a meaningful way that will help our business. Uh, going through healthcare, where we actually want to provide real-time analysis. Um, to patients that are undergoing uh, specific uh, procedures or are taking specific uh, medicines. Um, Homeland Security, where we have um, hundreds of thousands, of million, if not millions of, of sensors and devices that report data, which we want to analyze to be able to identify risks and dangers um, and prevent them in, in time. Um, E-commerce, where we have people um, basically uh, shopping online, looking at things. Uh, we want to understand trends. We want to understand what products are more popular so we can promote them or even change the price online. Uh, financial services, uh, which have kind of been the, the trendsetter or the trailblazer in that, in that front, uh, uh, where you know, processing very, very uh, large amounts of information very quickly uh, was, was something that they've been doing for quite a few years now. Um, and essentially, in almost every vertical, you see massive amounts of data um, that are being produced and uh, need to be processed in real time. Um, just to give you a few uh, uh, a few case studies that we've been facing here at Gigaspaces uh, for the last few years. Uh, so the first one is, is, is a case study uh, which belongs to the healthcare vertical, a uh, company named Pharmacy One Source, uh, which was acquired by another larger company called Walter Kluvers. Um, and the challenge there, basically what they're trying to do is um, they're connected to a few hundreds of hospitals in North America, um, and they process uh, essentially in real time. Every time a patient electronic medical record changes or uh, a prescription gets subscribed to this patient, uh, what they do is, is uh, process or, or uh, pass this electronic medical record through a series of rules. These can be hundreds of rules. Um, that essentially check uh, the viability of the treatment, the efficiency of the treatment, um, and uh, essentially try to find ways to optimize the treatment and to save costs for the hospitals. Um, this means that they need to process a lot of information uh, at very, very high speeds, um, uh, which is all fine, um, but the thing right now is that uh, the, the data uh, per patient and per hospital is growing immensely, um, and since they are serving uh, their customers uh, using a, a SaaS model, they need to be able to grow with their customers. Uh, so there's there's a big challenge here for them to go through, and we'll talk about how that is being handled by the solution that uh, that we're covering today. Uh, the other use case is called Avanza Bank. Um, this is a, a very uh, uh, very successful uh, Scandinavian bank based out of Sweden. Uh, what they do is uh, essentially uh, provide a, a trading platform, uh, one of the largest in Scandinavia, to their customers, both, in, both institutional um, and private customers. Um, and one of the key offerings in their service is to be able to provide their customers with um, the entire transaction history 
um, online so their customers can slice and dice the transaction history online um, at real time speed um, and make better investment decisions. Um, now here too, the amounts of data are growing very, very fast um, and the ability to basically analyze uh, this data at, in real time or near real time in, in, in response times that are basically uh, interactive for their users is something that is very important to them. Um, now if you take a step back um, and look at uh, what the data management uh, space uh, looks like today, uh, we can see that um, uh, we have a series of technologies or, or domains uh, that are driven by two main factors. Uh, the one is the volume of the data, uh, and the second is the velocity of the data, meaning uh, uh, how fast the data is entered into the system and how fast it needs to be processed. Okay. Um, so as we go from the uh, uh, from the left top left uh, corner um, into the bottom right corner, we're basically um, reducing the uh, data volume on one hand, but actually increasing um, the data velocity. Uh, so if we talk about massive amounts of data, uh, typically petabytes of data, here we're talking about um, what we call exploratory analytics. Uh, we're talking about tools like Hadoop uh, that can store these these massive amounts of data. Um, and essentially, we're talking about offline analysis uh, of the data. Um, as we move uh, uh, down to the right, uh, we're, we're starting to enter uh, the business intelligence domain, uh, whereby we actually uh, continuously um, extract the data from uh, uh, its raw format and basically uh, transform it so it's easily serviceable and queryable uh, for, for very specific types of queries uh, to the user. Uh, so that means that we have a step of basically transforming the data so it's, it's kind of uh, available to the users. Um, that also means that we have to uh, think in advance about the questions that we want to ask uh, because uh, these questions need to be expressed in the transformation uh, algorithm that we're using. Um, as we go further down, uh, we're talking about high throughput OTP systems. Uh, these are systems that typically require um, ad hoc querying, uh, meaning the users can actually uh, decide what they want to ask um, and uh, the parameters for, the, for their questions. So that means that uh, um, the data quantities cannot be petabytes. Uh, because uh, no current technology can actually uh, uh, perform ad hoc queries on, on, on this size of on, or this amount of data. Uh, so we're talking about typically about uh, terabytes of data. Um, and as we move down, uh, we're talking about uh, streaming technologies, which basically uh, process the data as it gets ingested into the system. Um, so the, the point here is that um, I know um, of a few calculations that I want to make on the fly. For example, count the number of times a certain user has clicked a specific URL. Um, and as the click stream, as the events are pumped into my system, um, I actually can, can do the counting. Uh, so this is done very, very quickly. This is done uh, uh, kind of uh, um, at real time um, and fetching uh, the, the number of clicks is something that is, is, is done very, very quickly because everything is kind of pre-processed. Um, so we're going from the um, raw data, usually unstructured, unprocessed, into the, uh, as we go down to the, to the bottom right corner, uh, we're basically talking about pre-calculating and pre-processing the information. Now, we talked about uh, growing amounts of data, uh, but on the other hand, um, we, have, we have a big problem because uh, if you look at processor speeds uh, um, and how they advanced in the last uh, 15, uh, last decade or, or even two decades, um, you'll find that uh, uh, we are still getting ever-increasing uh, CPU performance. Uh, it used to be uh, the raw gigahertz or the raw, raw processor speeds. Uh, right now, it's the number of cores or the density um, of the chips that you have uh, within within your computer. Uh, but it still means that we have a lot more processing powers uh, than we had, uh, let's say, a decade, a decade ago. That's it's 100 times more. So that, means, that means we can do a lot more uh, at any given point in time. On the other hand, if you look at um, hard drive technologies and storage technologies, um, for the most part, 
um, they had uh, they had very little improvements uh, because of physical limitations, because of the way hard drives work. Um, and that means that uh, although we have a lot more performance in the CPU, it, be it becomes harder and harder to exploit that performance in a meaningful way uh, when the uh, amounts of data are growing as fast as we're seeing them. Um, so one solution uh, that a lot of organizations uh, have been doing, and uh, that's kind of the uh, bread and butter for us at Gigaspaces, uh, is to keep things in memory. Uh, so essentially the idea is to use RAM um, and even uh, the same address space as your application is using um, and fetch the, and, and, and actually uh, process the data and query the data directly from the RAM. Um, there, you can actually distribute that, for example. If you want to increase your capacity, you can use multiple servers, um, and that will uh, give you a, a much larger capacity than a single server. Um, and typically, RAM it can be uh, you know uh, two or even three orders of magnitude uh, faster than, uh, uh, than than random access to uh, to a hard drive. Um, now, just to kind of uh, tell you about a few organizations that do that, so Facebook uh, keeps about 80% of its data um, in, in memory based on the Stanford research. Uh, this is typically caching and, and uh, uh, servicing uh, previously requested items um, in their system. Um, this has been very, very popular in, 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 in financial services. Um, in telcos, uh, essentially allowing for, uh, in some cases, actually enabling uh, a specific uh, class of applications that wasn't even possible before. Um, so memory and memory computing has been very has become has become kind of mainstream. Uh, it's something that almost uh, any large enterprise is using today. Um, the reason it's become mainstream, if I look at my kind of uh, uh, time at Gigaspaces, uh, I've been with Gigaspaces uh, for more than six years now. Um, and if I look at that, um, if I compare uh, today to, for example, 2008, uh, in, in 2008 we had a lot more marketing education to do. Um, RAM capacities were a lot smaller. Today we can we can buy a, a standard server with uh, 128 gigs of RAM uh, in, in less than $3,000. Uh, this wasn't the case uh, six years ago where we talked about capacities like two and four gigabytes. Um, on the software side, we allow advancements in, in algorithms and, and, and data storage technologies to understand what partitioning means, what sharding, what aggregation means. Um, actually, they're a lot more aware of the trade-offs um, that you have to make when you go distributed. Um, so I would say that today, uh, it's become a lot easier sell on one hand because people understand technologies, and on the other hand, we have a lot better support in hardware. Um, that said, um, again, I'm getting back to the uh, data growth problem, or it's not really a problem, right? It's just uh, uh, maybe a force of nature, if you will. Um, when we uh, analyzed the uh, data capacities that our customers uh, um, are using and our customers are storing uh, in our data grid, uh, we identified that by average, every, almost every customer um, uh, had uh, uh, their data capacity grow uh, um, from five up between five to ten times uh, compared to uh, compared to uh, the past, and this means that in a lot of uh, in in many ways the uh, in-memory computing approach has become uh, uh, cost prohibitive uh, because when you want to store two or three or five terabytes of data. Uh, exclusively on RAM, that means that you're going to have to pay a lot of money uh, for, uh, uh, for for servers and for memory. Um, when we analyze the types of data, you can see here it's it's not just related to one specific type of data. It's it's both unstructured and structured data. Uh, unstructured obviously is, is uh, it takes a larger uh, portion of of the pie here, but uh, uh, it's it's both structured and unstructured data. Uh, that uh, um, that is being uh, uh, generated and, and, and is being uh, kind of massively grown, um, which which brings us to uh, to flash drives. So so I talked a little bit about hard drives and how they work. 
Um, flash drives are really a, a very different animal. Um, it's uh, um, essentially uh, a way, or it, it provides. Um, we're not going to get into into the way they work. This is a whole different uh, session. Uh, but in general, flash drives provide uh, persistent storage that doesn't require any uh, uh, physical parts to move within the disk, um, and is basically much more efficient uh, in the, both in, 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 in space and in, 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 the, in, the, in the speed that you can access it. Um, just to kind of compare what flash drives are all about, um, they typically provide uh, 10 to 100 times faster random access uh, than, than hard drives, uh, which really brings um, a whole new class of, of storage uh, technologies to the picture uh, that, that allows us to handle uh, the ever-growing amounts of data on one hand, but on the other hand, still keep the access speeds um, uh, reasonable so that users can access things interactively. Uh, when you're talking about usages, uh, basically uh, uh, you can you can think of flash drives as, as the new hard drives. Uh, they serve uh, purposes like uh, persistency, logging, uh, overflow from DRAM, um, and so on. Uh, whereas the traditional hard drives, uh, which are very cheap um, uh, and, and and are becoming even cheaper today, are are mostly used for archiving of data. Uh, for backing up things, it comes the new tape today. So this is the, the new storage hierarchy. Um, so, so to sum that up, Flash uh, um, provides a way to um, combine within memory, which we're going to talk about uh, uh, later in the session. Combined within memory, it, it provides a way to um, accommodate for the ever-growing amounts of data and uh, the need to process this data uh, very, very quickly while still maintaining a reasonable, reasonable cost uh, to, to organizations. Uh, so at this point, I want to hand it over to Saeed to talk a little bit about what, the, what they're doing uh, around, the, around Flash and, uh, and SSD storage. Thank you very much, Uri. Appreciate it. Uh, very, very excited about this uh, partnership between Gigaspaces and FanDisk. We worked very, very closely with the Gigaspaces on the product integration uh, product development, and finally the launch of uh, Gigaspaces product. And uh, we are so excited to see this product moving from test and development phase into the deployment phase, where customers have actually purchased the product and deployed it, and we have use cases to prove the performance enhancement and the tangible benefits customers are enjoying as a result of this partnership. As I shared with you earlier, my name is Saeed Raja. I lead software development focused at enterprise databases, applications. We are very much focused on the areas how we can increase the performance of databases and applications. We don't want to be in the business of databases, rather how to improve the performance of them. As this chart shows you, we have a significant portfolio of patents. It's the fourth most powerful patent in the world. None of our competitors can come close to us. Furthermore, SanDisk is a very unique player in this industry. Right below the application, all the way inside the ASIC, we control all the touch points whether it's the software, hardware, firmware, ASIC, we have this complete vertical integration. As a result of that, we are a very significant player in the market to increase the performance of applications, databases, while providing flash storage to solve some of the leading industry problems. So today we are here to discuss about Zetascale software, which it provides an intelligent and efficient way to access flash storage. In the next few slides, we'll share with you our vision, how we perceive a world in the data spaces and applications. We have worked on this software for about three and a half years, and today this product is enterprise-grade ready, mission-critical ready, and has been deployed as part of ZAP 
in-memory database services in some of the industry-leading customers. As Uri mentioned, data is growing fast. Some of the older technologies have not kept up with it. One of the examples is the legacy architecture. That will include OS systems or some of the larger databases or tier one databases. Specifically in regards to OS, it has not kept up with the advancements and developments in the flash today. For example, disk APIs have no calls designed for flash storage, or they cannot take full benefit of flash storage. OS disk codes and file system lag through parallelism needed for high IOPS of flash storage. And this hinders the performance of applications. Next slide, please. As we are seeing, Flash is being adopted in the data centers, and it has alleviated certain performance and TCO issues. Customers have started deploying SSDs in mixed Flash arrays or as full Flash arrays, and that provides a lot of IOPS. The core problem still remains the same. Many applications will treat hard disk and flash alike. There is no distinction, distinction between them. Many of those calls or applications will treat flash as a block device. So by replacing hard disk with flash storage, you can get to IOPS, higher IOPS and performance, but you can really not treat flash as an extension of memory. So your full potential of flash storage has not been achieved. We needed to do something better and different. To solve that problem, we offered a new paradigm, which we call flash optimized or flash optimized solution. We proposed an API as part of the Zeta scale that enables databases or in memory compute applications to connect with Zeta scale and provide the performance that comes close to the DRAM. The key thing about Zeta Scale to remember is Zeta Scale will work with any flash format, such as SSDs, DIMM, PCIe, and NVMe. It is fully optimized and provides the maximum intelligence to optimize IOPS or data requirements for applications. Just to capstone Zetascale, Zetascale is an intelligent and efficient way to access flash storage. Applications can place their logical objects into Zetascale that provide that provides a storage subsystem. Zetascale API better exploits flash characteristics. Zetascale will optimize the use of cores, DRAMs, and flash to maximize application performance, such as extreme parallelism at all levels, including event handling threads, DRAM object caching, and flash device access. Furthermore, Zetascale will optimize flash write handling, garbage collection, and persistence. We have shown, as part of the Gigaspace partnership, that Zetascale and ZAP in-memory grid provide very, very compelling performance and value proposition to Gigaspace's customer. And Ori will share with you the solution and how it has achieved immense performance and TCO benefits for their customer. Thank you so much, Saeed. Um, so just just to kind of recap on, on what Saeed has said, um, the uh, the fact that um, a technology like Zeta Scale can be consumed uh, off the shelf, at least, at least for us, has made a tremendous difference. Uh, as, as I mentioned, um, traditional approaches to using SSDs behind the regular file system interface um, can only get you so far. Um, SSDs are 
um, in essence, a very different animal than than hard drives. Uh, they have very different characteristics. Um, they uh, need specific type of uh, management um, and uh, um, uh, usage to be able to, uh, you know, if you want to be able to exploit um, the maximum you can from them. Um, so by essentially taking Zetascale, which is um, uh, from a developed perspective, all it is is really a, a library. Um, um, all the kind of intelligence is uh, is kind of hidden within that library. A lot of the uh, 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 things, optimizations that Shah Said has mentioned, uh, uh, like uh, um, parallelism, being able to uh, uh, to uh, make the access to the SSD drive con uh, uh, concurrent. Uh, so that you can kind of uh, leverage the most out of it. Uh, things like uh, optimizing for garbage collection, really understanding the way um, the SSD and the SSD controller works so that you can optimize the access to it. Uh, this is what uh, makes Zetascale so special. Um, essentially, so essentially what we've done here <clears throat> is we, we took the same kind of uh, um, ZAP architecture uh, that our users have come to know and to uh, leverage uh, for uh, all the use cases that I mentioned at the beginning of the session. Um, and all we've done is very simple. We essentially, it wasn't that simple to implement, but it's very simple from the user perspective. Uh, we essentially wire Zetascale underneath the Zap API so that from the user perspective, they're still using the same Zap API uh, query, like you can, they can query the objects, uh, they're still using uh, transactions and data is distributed evenly and backed up uh, across the network. Uh, so from, from a user perspective, it looks uh, uh, exactly the same um, as if the user is using uh, a RAM only, a DRAM only solution. Um, what we're doing under the hood really is uh, uh, making it transparent uh, so that uh, the data is actually offloaded to the flash drive through Zeta scale. Um, so instead of being able to store, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, like 128 gigabytes, we can now store two terabytes because that's the capacity of a flash drive. And that's all uh, transparent. Um, the way we've implemented that is um, that we actually have a smart indexing mechanism that knows to, on one hand, save the important indexes or the, uh, the keys to the data um, in RAM, uh, but on the other hand, the rest of the data or the uh, the, the portion that uh, you don't usually query by, uh, we save that on the SSD. And when we actually when the user actually needs it, uh, we use that scale to access and fetch this data to the user. Um, that gives us the ability to store uh, tens or even hundreds of terabytes of data um, on the data grid, uh, whereas before we can only get to just a few terabytes. Uh, and this too was very cost prohibitive. Uh, so it brings a whole new set of use cases and applications um, that can be can leverage uh, uh, this capability. Um, at, at the right hand side, uh, what you're seeing really is, is the offline what we call the offline analytics layer. Uh, this is, if you recall from the uh, from the uh, uh, diagram at the beginning, this was kind of the uh, top left uh, corner where we have the uh, long-term long storage, um, data crunching, data analysis. Uh, so we're not taking that off the picture. Uh, we're just making the real-time analytics layer a lot more scalable and able to handle a lot larger capacities of data. Um, just to give you some numbers on, on, on where we are uh, in terms of performance. So if you take um, a RAM-only uh, ZAP uh, instance, really, this is uh, one instance in a cluster, um, and you're kind of pushing that to the limit um, on you know, quite, a, quite a commodity box. This is all on our website, the specifications for the benchmark. And you can get to up to 1 million reads or read transactions a second, um, which, is, which is pretty, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, if you hook it up uh, to SSD using Zeta scale, um, you can get almost 250,000 read transactions a second. Uh, mind you, this is just one server. So if you use the Zap clustering and you, and you deploy like 10 server, uh, 10 servers, this can be two and a half million reads a second. We actually proved those numbers. Um, 
So even though we have uh, a performance drop over here, um, we're still at the realm of uh, um, hundreds of thousands of operations a second. Um, and in many cases, the bottlenecks are, are, uh, you know, are not there. They're uh, in the network, they're in serialization, uh, they're in the application. Um, so for most of our users, these are good enough numbers uh, that they can now uh, consider using uh, these, this kind of technology. And as Saeed mentioned, a lot of them already are um, either using that or evaluating that. Um, if we kind of look at it from a cost perspective, that's even more interesting because if you measure uh, transactions per dollar, that means uh, how much bang for the buck am I getting uh, from, from my setup. Uh, we can see that uh, with Zeta scale um, in, in blue here, uh, we're getting uh, uh, three to four times more uh, transactions per dollar. Um, if we're looking at writes, if we're looking at reads, uh, it's about two times more transactions per dollar. Um, so for a typical application, um, we can reduce server footprint, footprint by at least 50%, which is very, very significant uh, for users. Uh, at the bottom here, you can actually see uh, the specs uh, for this benchmark. Uh, the code that we've used, which is actually, which is actually a standard open source uh, benchmarking tool called YCSB. Um, so that is all available on our website. So to summarize, um, what what this integration uh, brings to the table for uh, uh, for Zap users is a reduced hardware footprint of about 80% uh, for most common use cases, uh, the ability to uh, leverage or to uh, uh, to tackle a whole new set of use cases uh, that weren't uh, actually uh, um, you know available or. Um, um, you, could, you couldn't actually handle them up until today. Basically, having tens of terabytes of data and being able to access it in real time, this was something that either uh, would be uh, completely impossible or very, very costly to do. And you need specific hardware for that uh, um, and uh, you know, essentially pay a lot of money to get those, uh, those things running. Um, and the last thing is that uh, this actually uh, um, uh, is com completely transparent to, uh, to the Zap user. Uh, all the APIs that the Zap users come to, uh, come to know and love are still there. Um, transaction support, replication, uh, cross-site, uh, cross-site propagation of data, um, and everything else that's available in Zap uh, 10.0 is, is available with, uh, with Zetascale. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, thank Saeed again uh, for joining us. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, we're, as, as Saeed said, we're very, very excited about this partnership with SanDisk. We believe that uh, this is a game changer for, uh, uh, for us and for our users. Uh, and we're looking forward to extending this cooperation in the future. Thank you very much. Uri, thanks so much for inviting SanDisk. On behalf of SanDisk, I thank you so much for this opportunity. I continue to be excited about this partnership and this uh, joint product collaboration and development and uh, look forward to a lot more success in the future. Likewise, thank you, Saeed, and thank you for, uh, for everyone that listened. Um, thank you so much. Bye-bye.